Producers, I recently had the chance to speak to Alex, the CEO of Sonable, about their newest plugin in the smart line of plugins, the Smart DS. And spoilers, it also does smart deplosives. That's this video. It's a long one, but it's filled with great information and examples. So let's go ahead and jump right in. What's up, Alex? How are you doing today? All good. Uh, quite a lot of stuff to do in the last couple of days. Uh, as we just released a new plugin, as you may know. Absolutely. Smart DS, uh, the newest addition to the smart line of Sonable plugins. Really excited to have you show me what is so smart about it. Happy to show you around. Nice. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I think we can just start by, by looking at the user interface because it already explains a couple of things. Uh, and I play back audio, but without sound, just to show you what's happening. And then I show you how it sounds. Smart DS is an intelligent DSer, and it's able to identify sibilance and plosives in an audio signal. Wait, let me stop you right there. Yes. So it goes for plosives as well as DS. Exactly. Oh, wow. When we designed the tool, we first started with doing a DSer, like just processing sibilance. And then we thought, okay, if you're working with vocals, like there are typically two things that you want to do. You want to tame sibilance and probably also plosives. And that's why we thought, okay, let's try to put it into one tool. And in the end, yeah, it turned out to work really well. It's really great news to hear that. I think. You know, I had a lot of questions about plosives recently. I had a problem with the lav mic. And obviously the, the name of the plugin is DS. So I was actually <laughs> under the impression that it would be just that kind of one trick sort of thing. But to know that it handles plosives as well is really exciting. And I can't wait for you to show me how it works. Like, and there are a couple of, of unique things about the plugin. In the audio file, you can see, or in, in, the, in the display, you can see green and blue regions here. And what these regions are, are sections where the plugin automatically identified a sibilant or a plosive. So sibilant are sounds like S or SH or H, like all fricatives. And plosives are sounds like K, T, P, you know, like all these consonant um, sounds. And while other DSers simply look at some energies in frequency ranges to identify if there is an S or not, and then you have to manually set a threshold, SmartDS actually uses a neural network to really exactly identify the the start and end of each phoneme. And it also identifies if it's an S or if it's an SH or if it's a KT and it processes them differently. So, oh, wow. so the detection process itself is really totally unique. And um, as you will hear later, it really pays off to, to put so much effort into the detection because it makes the whole processing more natural. The first file I want to show you is this sample. It's a vocal sample with some instruments. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? And this is already the, the DS version, so I'm taking Smart DS off this track again and start from scratch. And I also just play the vocal so it's easier to hear what's happening. So when you get started with Smart DS, you always load the plugin. The first thing you want to do is analyze the voice. This is necessary because different speakers and singers have different vocal characteristics. So depending on your vocal tract and so on, your S's may sound totally different from someone else. And during a short learning phase between like five seconds or a bit more, depends on how many S uh, occurrences are detected. The plugin internally computes a kind of voice print, which is like a, fo a vocal fingerprint, and then it applies custom processing. Processing that perfectly matches to your voice. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? The sun before it shines the bright, the light before it's out of sight. That was quick. That was quick. And the nice thing is we are kind of done. <laughs> so if we, if, if we want to go with that, we can go with that. Just quickly play a pipe version and a process version so that you can hear what's what's happening. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? The sun before it shines the bright, the light before it's out of sight. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? The sun before it shines the bright, the light before it's out of sight. So you can hear that this relatively sharp S's that kind of popped out a bit uh, are like totally smooth now and I didn't do anything. So the nice thing is I don't have to search for a frequency range where I have to look for an S. I don't have to set a threshold um, where I have to, you know, make sure to not suppress too much and not too little. But this is more or less all done by the plugin. There are a couple of things that you can do to, to fine tune the processing. One is the suppression. The higher the suppression, the more louder sibilants are tamed and the lower the suppression, the less they are tamed. And here you can see the, the green curve is the kind of gain reduction that's applied. So if I increase the suppression, you can see gain reduction uh, is stronger. And if I reduce it, the gain reduction becomes less. And typically at 50 
like the, the setting that's learned, this is a gain reduction that should typically work quite well for this track. And that's kind of the first step to balance the level of S sounds. Let me ask you, when you do the analyzation of the voice or the speaker or the singer, does the suppression and shaping, are those just going to always default to 50 and 100? Or will those be more or less depending on whatever the analysis was? They will actually default to 50 and 100, but it's not always doing the same. So for a different voice uh, or a different see. speaker, 50 suppression is another setting than 50 suppression for another one. So it always adapts to, to kind of a sweet spot. And from there, you can do either more or less. And the same is for the shaping. The shaping, that's the the second thing that's happening because like the suppression is you have to you get the right level for your sibilance and the shaping is also a unique unique tool um, of smart ds because it, it controls how much spectral processing you apply uh, for the sibilance you can choose a color like soft balanced or sharp and this is kind of a target color so you can tell the plugin okay i want the s sounds after processing to either sound really soft or really sharp or balanced. By setting the shaping strength, you can tell it, okay, if it's zero, then it just does broadband suppression, no spectral processing at all. And if you increase it to 150, then it like really tries to make them really sharp, really soft, or, or stay balanced. But the nice thing is that you cannot only kind of tame the level of the sibilance, but you can even change the character of the sibilance. I can quickly show you for this voice what's the difference between using a soft or sharp target color. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? The sun before it turns to bright, the light before it's out of sight. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? The sun before it turns to bright, the light before it's out of sight. And they also increase the shaping to kind of a very strong value, so it becomes obvious what's happening. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? 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 You've got the ability to listen to the soloed difference signal, right? Perhaps maybe we can do the same sort of processing we're doing now, but with the difference signal on, so we can really hear the difference even better. Not to say that I couldn't hear the difference there, because I totally could. <laughs> uh, the softer one was indeed what I would characterize as softer, and the sharper one was a mo had more bite to it. Exactly. And that's the, the, the idea is that it still stays natural, so you wouldn't be able to tell okay, the soft one is the original one or the sharp one is the original one. It's still both could be <laughs> the actual S's, but we can listen to the, to the different signal too, yeah. Another thing quite good to know, you have the main display here and this is the time signal. This is the a spectrogram, so it shows you the, the energies in different frequencies and the colored areas are areas where some spectral processing is, is taking place. In this display here, the spectral shaping, you can see what's happening. If I set the shaping to zero and just do a lot of compression and I deactivate plosives, you can see now it's just doing broadband compression. So all frequencies are just reduced in level. Uh, and the more I increase the shaping, the more this processing becomes frequency dependent. And that's where the shaping comes into play. So it's a nice uh, way to monitor what's what's happening uh, to your signal. When we did our live stream a while back, links in the description if everyone wants to check it out, they should, where we kind of went through all of the smart plugins up to that point. I had complimented you on how great your visual feedbacks are inside of your plugins. I love a plugin that looks nice. What I really love is a plugin that looks nice and is giving me information with the beauty of the, you know, the UI itself. And your plugins absolutely nail it. And I think this is a, a keen example of exactly what I'm talking about. They're, they're phenomenal. So keep up the good work on that front. Thank you very much. It also, like, yeah, when we develop a new plugin, like, obviously, the most important thing is the audio processing because that's the result that people are using. But we really also put quite a lot of effort into thinking about how can we make technologies that are behind the scenes really complex, relatively easy accessible, and, and help people understand with different visualizations what's actually happening. Uh, the compressor specifically, I recommend it to people who don't know what compression is to get the compressor because it will teach you, not only will it do the compression in a great manner, in a smart way, as you would call it, but it also <laughs> will teach you about compression while doing it. Not only does it give you the information, but it'll actually be like, 
it'll let you understand what's happening with compression. It's absolutely phenomenal. Exactly. And it, and we did something similar here when it comes to showing what's happening because if you look at the signal down here, if it changes the suppression, it changes for like this is past samples, you know, the new th stuff is coming in here and still you see the impact on everything. And this makes it so much easier to get a, a nice trade-off if you want to tweak parameters. So it's we call it instant replay. I think it's a subtle feature of our plugins, but it's really, really nice and helpful. And one other question before we move on, will it always be balanced by default or will at some times the algorithm think that a softer approach might be better or is it just going to be balanced for that voice and then you have to make the decision on whether or not you want a little more bite or a little more uh, a little less what the plugin tries to achieve is a relatively nice balance between different phonemes and with phonemes i not i not only mean sibilants and plosives but like whole speeds you know whole speech or vocals if you have a vocal where, for example, the S sounds are sticking out a lot, it tries to bring them down quite a lot to the level of the other phonemes. If you have a vocal where the S sounds are already quite well embedded into the sound, there are samples, you know, if the S sounds are really low, it won't suppress them at all and will only apply shaping. So just, just change the color of them a bit, but there is no need to suppress the sound if it's not sticking out. The plugin automatically adapts to what it's seeing. That's probably the easiest way to to describe it. Also, you just kind of brought up another question I would inevitably have here during our session, and that is this can be applied to sung vocals and also just straight dialogue for videos and podcasts and such as well, yeah? It was designed to be used on vocals and in speech. Understood. And now I want to give you another quick example on plosives. Walking all alone in the pouring rain. So you kind of hear that there there was a, a the pouring rain thing was uh, was a bit um, plosive. -y. Too much energy there. And so if I enable the plugin and let it do its thing. Walking all alone in the pouring rain. So you see that that this is the p. It was like perfectly identified, like start to end. And if you look at the at the spectral shaping uh, during this p, you will see that it takes out quite a lot of energy in the low end. Walking all alone in the pouring rain. I'll tell you what. I've just recently done some videos, and I referred to it earlier here on this call, where I had a lavalier mic on without a windscreen and i had some really bad plosives and i've tried some other plugins that it did remove the plosive but it removed a lot of what i was saying too it was just like <laughs> you just got to get rid of it all i'm really excited to try this because what i've just heard here is not only does it get rid of that and unwanted energy it also seems to keep the character of the voice, which is no small feat. Um, you can't just put a you know a high pass filter on it, so to speak. But this seems to do a really good job, so I'm definitely going to try that out as soon as we get off the call here. That's like one of the main driving forces when we started the development of of Smart DS was really to think about how can we make a DSer, and in this case also a deplosive tool, but let's say focus on the DSer, how can we make it sound as as natural as possible? Because DSing is always such a, you know, tricky thing with um, finding the right settings and then it sounds not natural as soon as you do a slight bit too much. So yeah, we are really happy with the with the result when we were finished. All the processing that I showed up to this point was in full range mode. And full range means it always processes the whole spectrum, like from low frequencies to high frequencies, but it doesn't process everything in the same way because it uses spectral processing. What you can also do is you can use split band mode. And in split band mode, you can set a designated range for the sibilance and plosives. Uh, you can tell the plugin to only process sibilance in a certain frequency range or plosives in a certain frequency range. And what it helps to do is, for example, if you really only want to get rid of the boomy low end of a plosive, you can set the range to a quite low value, then it won't touch the high frequency content uh, and the same for sibilance if you want to only process a certain frequency range of sibilance then you can go for that that said i typically recommend to stick to full range mode because due to the spectral processing it sounds natural anyway and actually it sounds more natural if you if you allow the plugin to do its thing but if there's a good reason to um, to limit the processing of sibilance or plosives to a certain frequency range Totally fine. You can. It's kind of one of those fine tuning parameters that you can use if you want to, or you can just, you know, uh, stick to full range and it's also fine. 
I'll tell you what, if it's easier and better, count me in. So full range it is. Yeah, so so that's one of those those tweaking parameters you can use or just leave. And what you can also do, if you're in split band, you can listen to the ranges. Have you ever seen the crystal moon? The same uh, I think the last sort of features to talk about, Alex, would be the fast, mid, and slow and what those do. What speed exactly is that pertaining to? And then per I also see there is a max gain reduction, which we can probably tackle last. But what is that fast, mid, slow in the bottom right of the UI doing? The fast, mid, and slow is is really actually doing what what it says, kind of. It, it more or less controls the attack and mainly the release time of, of the processing. So if I'm choosing fast, you can see that the slope when it's releasing is quite steep. And if I go to slow, you can see that there are much smoother releases. Per default, it's on mid, so which is kind of a trade-off, and normally it sounds quite re uh, like really well. As the detection is really precise with this plugin, it's not so crucial as with other DSs to have these time constants, right? But yeah, it's something you can you can tweak if you want to. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, as they say. Exactly. It's it's similar to the to the full range mode. We also thought, okay, should we just throw it away, the split band, because it's not really giving so much benefit. But then we thought, no, there are always reasons and use cases where it's nice to have a bit more control, so we just kept it in. But if you don't want to or need to use it, just don't use it. And the last feature yeah, you asked for was the max gain reduction. This is also relatively simple. It just means you can tell the plugin to only apply a maximum gain reduction of, for example, minus 15 dB and not allow more than that. So to kind of to limit the impact on, on the processing. And I can show you what it means. Use a huge suppression amount. The plugin would take out a lot of energy now here. And I can, with the max gain reduction, limit the maximum processing. And it's kind of a safety net. Well, I mean, I think that's pretty much it, if, if I'm not mistaken. There's obviously the mix knob in the um, output gain slider there or gain parameter. Is there any other final thoughts that you want to leave us with before we wrap up? As I said, like normally you really just analyze the voice, get some nice settings and you're done. But if you want to dig deeper, you can use all these shaping and tuning things that, that we just talked about. Well, I'll tell you what, Alex, as I said earlier in the video, I do have some perfect problem microphone audio that I'm going to be able to test uh, the Smart DS on immediately. It's m less of the S and more of the plosive feature, but I'm very excited after seeing this presentation to jump in and try it because I need to use that audio. And, uh, you know, it, they always say get it right on the day, but it never happens. And I'm excited to have a tool like this to be able to fix that mistake and hopefully make the audio uh, usable in the end, because otherwise I'm in big trouble. So thanks for saving <laughs> me. I appreciate You're you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's not the first time, and it won't be the last time that Sonable comes to save the day. So thanks for taking the time and doing this with me today. Uh, it's been very enlightening and exciting, and I can't wait to get my hands on the Smart DS. For everybody who's watching, Smart DS is available now in Plugin Boutique. It came out earlier this week. Definitely check it out, throw it on some of your audio, and just watch the magic happen. Thanks for having me here, and uh, yeah, have a great day. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, Alex, and everybody else watching, see you in the next one.